Welcome, this is Ed Dominguez, and today I want to introduce you to two native Pacific Northwest shrubs that have been the source of friendly controversy for as long as, well, forever, as to which has the tastiest berry. I'm talking about salmonberry and thimbleberry. In this episode, we'll look at both their flowers, their leaves, and we'll talk about their berries, although it's not berry season yet, and then I'll leave it for you to decide which is the tastier. Let's take a look at salmonberry, where I'm standing now. Rubus spectabilis. Rubus is the Roman term for this plant, and I think spectabilis you can get means spectacular or showy. This is a beautiful shrub that likes wet areas. You can see this one's growing in a nice mossy low area. Salmonberry can be a small plant or it can grow to be a shrub like this one as much as 8 to 10 feet high. And in the spring, April and May, you can see that it has beautiful purple flowers. Each April, salmonberry shrubs are covered with gorgeous deep magenta flowers. Each flower has five petals and they festoon the entire plant. Salmon berries can form dense thickets and on their stems many times there are thorns. Not particularly stiff or sharp thorns but if you're wading through salmon berry and you have short sleeves you might expect to get a few scratches. The young shoots of salmon berry were an important food for Native Americans. They took the young shoots as they were coming up, cut them off and peeled them and ate them like asparagus. They have an astringent flavor, which I think helped complement their diet of salmon, because you can imagine if you eat salmon meal after meal, the greasy salmon taste would be nicely offset by a nice kind of astringent green like the salmonberry shoots. The leaves of salmonberry are divided into three sections or leaflets. The section at the tip of the stem is called the terminal leaflet. These two flanking leaflets are known as the lateral leaf leaflets. Together they comprise the entire leaf. And if you're out hiking with your kids, there is something very cool you can do with salmonberry leaves. I'll show you in just a moment. You can make a butterfly. But it's the berry of the salmon berry that makes it so prized by us Pacific Northwesterners. Now, this plant has just finished flowering, so you're looking at the green immature berry, but it's going to grow in size and change its color. It will end up being blackberry sized, but instead of being deep purple, the color will vary from yellow to rosy red to a deep peach or coral color very much similar to the color of salmon flesh. Now, a few months ago, I was leading a group of elementary school students, first graders, and one girl said, the berries are good to eat? Is that why they call it salmon berry? Because salmon like to eat them? And I had to gently remind her that although salmon berry likes to grow in wet, soggy environments, it is a land plant and salmon are aquatic creatures that stay in the water. So no, the salmon don't eat the salmon berries, but the color of the berry is very similar to salmon flesh and the fact that native peoples used the shoots as accompaniment to their uh, baked salmon dinners gave this plant its name. And for many Northwesterners, the taste of this berry is prized. Others don't find it quite as flavorful, so I think the flavor varies from salmonberry shrub to salmonberry shrub. Now, when you're out with your family on a walk, you can show them this great trick you can do with salmonberry leaves that has been done for generations to teach children the salmonberry. If you take the salmonberry leaflet, fold the terminal leaflet down, you make a butterfly and show your children the lateral leaflets, flat back and forth and look very much like a butterfly. So salmonberry, not a butterfly bush, but a treasured Pacific Northwest native plant with delicious berries and butterflies. Our other favorite Pacific Northwest shrub is the thimbleberry. 
Rubus parviflorum. Rubus, again the Roman term, parviflorum means surprisingly small flowered, which is a misnomer because the thimbleberry flowers are quite large and showy. Beautiful white flowers with five petals. As the berries ripen in early to midsummer, they form a beautiful dark red raspberry that's shallow cupped and to some people looks something like a thimble you'd put on your finger when you're sewing. Now I mentioned the controversy between the aficionados of salmonberry flavor berries and the aficionados of thimbleberry flavored berries. Which camp do I fall into? I would have to say, by and large, the thimbleberry is the sweetest berry and the one that I go for. But they do have quite a few seeds in them, tiny seeds, so you might want to have your dental floss handy to get the seeds out afterwards. But a delicious, tasty berry. And the leaf of the thimbleberry has an additional feature that you may or may not find helpful for you. The leaves of the thimbleberry are maple shaped, broad and flat and very soft, which is why this plant has acquired the nickname nature's toilet paper. So if you're in an, on an outing and you find you're in need and you don't have anything, the thimbleberry can accommodate your needs. The thimbleberry and the salmonberry, two Pacific Northwest shrubs with delicious berries. The world of nature is waiting for you. So get outdoors, stay curious, and please hit subscribe for more Getting Wild with me.